is Masonic. Hola, Espasónicos, ¿qué tal a todos? Hoy estamos aquí con Julian Parker de Native Instruments. Él es el jefe de desarrolladores software y hoy nos va a explicar una de las novedades que, que trae Reactor. Y es muy interesante lo que trae, o sea que vamos a dejarle que nos lo explique. Julian, thank you so much for thank your you. time um, and for showing us the new updates of Reactor. So please go ahead and show us okay. the goodies. <laughs> Thanks, Fabi. So um, what we're showing today is a new update to Reactor Blocks. So um, for all of you viewers who are already familiar with blocks, you know that uh, traditionally the way to, uh, to patch things in Reactor is by this uh, structure view, which you can see down the bottom here. Um, the big thing in this new update is what we call rack mode. And basically it means that you can, you can interact with blocks modules the same way that you would do with like hardware Eurorack modules, and you can patch them from the front panel with cables. Um, so, the idea behind this is just, you know, we want people to have a really smooth and uh, pleasant user experience if they're coming from hardware modular to uh, software and just, you know, allow people to jump in with the, the least amount of uh, learning possible. So I guess to demonstrate this to you, I'm just going to build a really quick patch. So this is another cool new feature. We can just hit enter and search through modules. So mm -hmm. let's add an oscillator. We have a lot of oscillators. <laughs> I'll how, talk about this in a minute, maybe. But how many how many modules do you have? If I do my um, so, with the new uh, with the new uh, reactor update, actually we have a bunch of modules that are available for free. Um, and um, they're basically they're available if you have the player version of Reactor, which you get, for example, in Complete Start. Um, and we have a full set of basic modules then available to you for free that you can just use. That's something like uh, 10, 15 modules. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we have uh, packs of modules that you can buy if you want to go further. So we have one pack mm -hmm. from us, from NI, that has uh, a bunch of our other blocks. So some West Coast stuff, some boutique stuff, like all kinds of things. And then we have two packs available from third party uh, manufacturers. So we have one from uh, Michael Hetrick the okay. Euro React um, modules. He also has a free pack that you can download and then some paid ones. And then we have a bunch of brand new stuff um, uh, called the Toy Box uh, packs. So there's all kinds of different modules in different, um, well, in, in different categories. So there's like some there's sampling stuff. There's a cool wavetable oscillator. There's loads of stuff. So there's lots of content. But the, the cool thing is that you can jump in for free and then just buy stuff that you want to add and like grow your setup from there. And that's that's different from how Reactor was in the past where you needed to like pay. If you wanted a patch, you had to pay basically. <laughs> now we now we make patching available to everyone for free, which I think is cool. That's very nice. Can we so, just... Yeah, yeah, let's, yes. let's make a small patch yes. uh, just to show you how easy it is. So when you open a new rack in, in Reactor, you have like a bunch of modules that appear by default. So there's like a clock, there's a, a note in, and then we have like the outputs. So I've just added an oscillator. Um, we don't have a keyboard hooked up right now, so let's maybe use a sequencer to, to run this. So I can just hit enter again, type in seek, and then we have all of our sequences. Um, I'm gonna use one of the free ones again because uh, it's nice and simple. So we have a simple eight step sequencer here. Let's put that down there. Um, we can hook up the gate from our clock to the sequencer. There we go, you can see it running. Maybe a bit too fast, let's go a bit slower. We can hook up the pitch to the oscillator and let's program in a little sequence to use later. This is probably not gonna be a great sequence, but we'll see. Um, now, um, so let's make some sound. What do we want after an oscillator? A filter, I guess. Filter, yeah, VCA. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Um, so let's, let's type in FLT. That's the abbreviation for filter. Uh, we've got so many to choose from. Okay, so let's choose one from blocks, uh, our premium set of blocks. So this is okay. a, a kind of dual uh, MS-20 style filter. Hopefully I'm okay to say MS-20. <laughs> Um, so I'll patch out the oscillator into the filter. 
Let's turn it on to, so sine wave's a bit boring, so let's just turn it on to like sawtooth or something. So you kind of like inspired, got inspired by other... Uh, yeah, I mean, so for a lot of the original block stuff, we tried to, we looked at what people liked and what we, we make liked. Make it available for people. Yeah, because okay. we're all modular geeks, and yeah. so we tried to make all of the things that we would want to have in a software modular to make okay. the kind of stuff that we wanted to okay. do. So that's where we get things like this. So then maybe let's patch in a VCA. So here we go, simple one again. And an envelope. Let's hope this patch sounds good. This is <laughs> patching blind really. So we can patch the gate of the sequencer out to the envelope. Uh, let's send, okay, at the moment it's do you have like some pre patches made? We so do actually. To so just to start playing. Absolutely. Around. So um, we we don't have them ready to show you today, but okay. uh, coming with um, well with the free set of blocks and also our premium collection is a big set of really really fantastic uh, patches done by our patching expert okay. uh, Yano Lacorta, and they're fantastic actually they, they make great like starting points for learning and also just if you want to like tweak around and make cool sounds okay. um, so yeah it's a good way to learn so let's just patch this out now the normal blocks way you have the envelope appearing on this a modulation bus and we can patch this in here we now got the envelope controlling the VCA and now we're gonna send it out to the output so this is the point at which it sounds bad and we regret everything okay <laughs> We patched blind and it doesn't sound too bad. That's like a result. So, here we go. If the filter. So, where do we want to go from here? Should we patch the envelope into the filter as well? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, can we change the wave of the oscillator? Yeah, sure. What would you like? Yeah, square? It's a square, yeah. yeah. Like, mid tune down. Maybe. Actually, what we could even do is... We can add a second oscillator and set up some FM, maybe? Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, let's go for another one of the same. Oh no, not this one. Too many modules. <laughs> so the main difference, I would say, like, is that you can patch on the surface. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. So it makes okay. it really feel... Yeah, proper. Yeah, it makes yeah. it feel like patching a hardware modular. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've got another oscillator hooked up. Let's maybe take the sign, feed it into the FM input of the first one. We can turn this to nice through zero FM. Get some cool FM yes. sounds. So we already hooked up the envelope to the filter. And there we go. So, I mean, not the most inspiring patch in the world maybe, but like this took us what? Yes, well. yeah, Two minutes. Yeah. And that's the great thing about uh, about this new version of Blocks. Like you can really work with it as quickly as you would work with any kind of any hardware other, modular. Yes, and you can save it. I guess. Is there any changes on the saving process? Okay, before? that's that's a really great great question. So, one of the disadvantages maybe of Reactor previously was. Um, like when you saved a, a reactor ensemble, you saved like everything about it, all the data, like all of the structures, all the like pictures for the GUI, everything. So it was all there baked in, which meant that you couldn't really save it with a project in your door. So you would have to save an extra file. Okay. So now if you're using the new uh, reactor, uh, well, basically the rack mode. Mm -hmm. So instead of saving everything in this file, we save just like things that point towards it. So that means, Everything is saved automatically with your door project. Okay. So you can just open up Reactor on one of your on one of the channels in your door, make a and patch. It's just been and it's saved automatically. Yeah, you don't have okay. to save the ensemble and then remember where you put it and stuff. It's just there in your project. That makes it very easy. Yeah. Which is obviously yes. a, a big improvement. Yes, yes. Saving patches is the dream. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Is there any way that you can change, for example, the modif the uh, the patches inside the module 
for example. Yes, um, but so you get well, to know actually how it works and understand what so VCA is inside of VCO. Because we wanted to have this like super smooth user experience for the rack mode, mm -hmm. you can't do that directly from rack mode. Okay. Um, you have to go back into normal reactor mode, the ensemble mode, and then you can just as normal. I won't show it now because then we'll lose our beautiful musical composition. Mm -hmm. um, then, yeah, you just go into the normal ensemble mode, load up the module that you're interested in. You can go in there and you can mess around with it. The only uh, kind of caveat there is that uh, at the moment there's no way to uh, take that modified thing and then use it back in the rack mode. Okay. Um, who knows what's possible in the future, but for now, uh, we wanted to keep it like super simple and consistent. So it's like, basically rack mode is like a hardware modular. So you have yeah, your modules, like, yes, you can use you them. You can use them, yeah, 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 of course. So I guess you can have like controller and just go there and go Absolutely. to your gig and play. like Exactly, and you can be confident that it's going to work out. Sweet, that's yeah. really nice. So the main highlights, we will say that you can save your patches now and also you can patch them. In yeah, between. you can save your patches automatically in your door and you can patch on the front panel. Yes. And it's fun. It was always fun, but even it's even more fun now. <laughs> what actually was the feedback, what it got you like to change and to implement these new things? I mean, to be honest, people like blocks already. We have a lot of users mm -hmm. who are quite passionate about it and we have lots of people making content for it. But the number one, um, let's turn this down a bit maybe. The number one complaint was always that uh, you can't patch from the front panel. That's what people want. So that so was our inspiration. So you were hearing the users, yeah. basically, the, the feedback. And the number two that. complaint was, oh, I don't like the workflow saving things in the door, like the separate <laughs> files. So that's what we did. We listened good, to our users and we good. fixed the top two complaints, I hope. <laughs> good, that's really nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Julian, for explaining us. Is there any like module that you like it the most or do you like work it especially? Um, oh, I have so many favorites. Um, I'm going to say, so my favorite of the, uh, the new ones that mm -hmm. we have in, in these new packs are the, there's a toy box uh, wavetable oscillator that I think is, is super nice. So we can find it here. Let's kill our two bento box oscillators. We can hook up uh, the pitch from the sequencer again to here uh, and the output. So, okay, it's just a sawtooth to start off with, but you have all these different wavetables. You can get all kinds of different timbres from them. Let's make it a bit louder. Oh, wow. And the nice thing is it has a built-in scanning LFO, so you don't have to hook up extra modulation, you can just scan straight through the wavetables without doing any further patching. You can also do like unison and chord stuff, so you can get really complicated sounds going on pretty quickly. This is a really cool one. Yeah, it sounds really good actually. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of the highlights for me. Um, and of course we have lots of other great stuff as well, you know, I, I think we're all very happy with uh, what we put in there, so it's, it's a great kind of like Congratulations, guys. bag of have, stuff to, to yeah. dig through and find what you like the best. Yeah, You have done a really good job and also that is available, like it's for free, you can start learning. Well, at least the basics. At least the basics, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, then you go and pay that is like way more cheap than a module itself, <laughs> especially for beginners, which is yeah. a good point, like if to start. Yeah, I, a big I motivation for us for this whole project was to kind of democratizing modular synthesis even yeah. further so we want like it to be available to everyone wow. thank you so much julia for your time That's it's a been a great great um uh, to show us uh, what it, it does and chicos hispasonicos <laughs> muchísimas gracias por estar ahí una de las cosas que sí me gustaría poder eh, enfo en enfatizar es el hecho de que Es una gran herramienta para principiantes que no saben por, qué, por dónde empezar, qué módulo comprarse, puedes simplemente eh, descargártelo, usa, o sea, lógicamente te viene con, con la máquina, puedes empezar a, a pachear, a entender el, el proceso y a partir de ahí ya um, avanzar en, en los conocimientos. 
Muchísimas gracias. Thank you again, Julian. Thank you. Gracias Thanks a vosotros y pasónicos. Y nada, nos vemos en la próxima. Muchas gracias. <laughs>